Hey, welcome back to the channel. And today we have a five by five Sudoku, actually, uh, now that I'm counting the squares. Um, this one is called Lonely Archer by Apricot. And um, don't have much of an intro today. Um, all I will say is if you enjoy these videos that I'm doing, please like, comment and subscribe. You have no idea how much that helps me. Um, my ultimate goal clearly at this moment is to get to a thousand subscribers. We're quite a ways away, but I'm pretty sure we can do that. We can get there eventually. So uh, anything you guys do for me is just wonderful. Love y'all. Anyway, so Lonely Archer by Apricot. Uh, let's get into some rules and let's start this off. So we've got irregular Sudoku. So we don't have any um, normal or typical cages in this one or regions, I should say. But we must place the digits one through five once each and every row, column and region. So every region is outlined with a dark border. And so all of those must have one to five each. And then of course, every row and every column must as well. Now we've got anti-knight moves. So cells, everybody knights move and chess cannot contain the same digit. Uh, essentially what that means is if you had a digit here, a knight's move is in an L shape. So anything that is in within a knight's move, we can just go fast now that you see what that is, um, cannot contain the same digit. So if this is X, none of these could be X as well. Arrows, so digits along an arrow must sum to the number indicated in the circle from which the arrow emerges. This circle right here must be the sum of these two digits is all that's saying. And there are no constraints to say you cannot repeat a digit on an arrow if otherwise allowed to. In this instance, you wouldn't be able to anyway. But Then we've got skyscrapers. So each number in the grid indicates the height of a skyscraper in its cell indicates the height of a site. Okay, yeah, sorry, I was reading that weirdly to myself. Each number in the grid indicates the height of a skyscraper in itself. A clue outside the grid indicates the number of skyscrapers visible from that direction, or taller skyscrapers block, shorter ones from view. Uh, so we have five different digits we can put into any of these rows or columns. Uh, what a skyscraper means is if this was, I'm just going to put in references one two three four and five we would be able to see from this side we'd be able to see every single one of these so therefore the number would be if there was a clue over here it would be a five now on the other side we would only be able to see one skyscraper because the five blocks every other one below it because it's five and everything's less so therefore if a clue was over here it would just be a one now we also have v's so values on a v sum to five and once again there's only one of them here but whatever it is, these two digits must add up to equal five. And that's all there is. It says not all these are necessarily given. So there are no, there's no negative constraint. Now, those are our rules. Let's, uh, let's jump into this one and see uh, what we can figure out. Now, these skyscraper clues are three and four. So the four is almost, um, I don't know if I'd use the term we would call a perfect uh, type of clue for a skyscraper, but if you were to have a five, like I said in my uh, description, you would know the exact uh, layout. If you at the four, on the other hand, though, we don't quite know what the, the layout is. All we do know is that there has to be a five in one of these two cells here, because if there was a five anywhere further or closer to that digit, that would impact the number of digits we could possibly have here. Now, the three is similar, but less constrictive. So it could be any of these could be a five. Because you could have, you know, three, four, five here, and the one and the two, you would never be able to see them. Now, I guess, there's a possibility that the knight's move is going to be how we get started here because it is such a tight knit um, Sudoku since it's a five by five. Therefore, in my example, this digit right here uh, would see all of these digits in um, these other regions. Now it would see these two as well. And of course, it would see all the ones that are in this region by itself. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the only digit in this region that this cell here doesn't see is this one. So therefore, they must be the same digit. Now, that's going to remove uh, 
uh, all of these from being green, which I think we already knew because this one saw all this anyway, and this one doesn't add to that collection in any way. None of these can be, those can't be. So therefore, we're going to know this one also has to be green because it's the only thing left in this. Um, it was originally, I just saw this one first, but uh, this green sees all of these digits in this region, so therefore this must be a green digit. Now we're down to, we've got an X-wing of greens in the corner, is what that turns out to be. Now I don't know what green is. All we can say at this moment is green is not one or two, uh, because you can never put one or two in this uh, specific location. Now, can we figure out anything else using this type of logic in terms of what uh, can and can't be the same digits? Well, if, could this ever be three or could this ever be four? think about those situations. I think the four is going to be the easiest one to look at. If this is, this has to be at least three. So if this was a three, the only thing, and that's the least it could be. If this was a three, the only possible solutions there would be that this would be a three, four, five, and you only be able to see, see three skyscrapers. So this clue would be broken. Same thing occurs with four and five. We said, you know, you can't have one or two in here, obviously, because you can't add two digits to equal one or two. So therefore, this can never be green because it would break the four clue. So this is green, which gives us a nice little diagonal pattern going through here as to uh, what green is. Now, if green is a high high-ish digit that doesn't necessarily tell us what it is. Like I said, it could be 3, 4, or 5. And all of those would work to be able to create both of these clues to work in that way. Now, is there anything else that we can... Like I was saying, is there anything else we can say that has a similar type of reduction? What about this digit? Because it sees both of those. So this digit and this digit have to be the same. And that can't be, that can't be, but we don't know which one of these is yet. These two, well, none of those could be because it's already in the region. Let's get rid of those. We know it's not green. We know that can't be, we know that can't be, we know this can't be. Is there anything else this shows us? These, yeah, so we did have an X-Wing here. It was hard to see uh, with the, all of the, the marks show, or the, all the things selected, but uh, if we were to look back on what we had determined, we end up with this and this being an X-Wing on purples, so therefore this can't be purple. This can't be purple, this can't be purple, and this can't be purple. So therefore, this is purple, and if this is purple down here, it means this can't be. So we have this, this, and this all being purple. Now we should have... That's, that's all of them. Okay. So that we have those now. We do something similar, like down here. Uh, it doesn't... Is that the same type of... Now let's do this one instead, because this one is easier to look at. It can't be this one or this one, just by Sudoku and by Knight's move. So these two have to be the same digit. Therefore, this is going to be the same digit. Uh, this is going to be, and this is going to be. And it's going to be, it looks like it's just going to be this pattern throughout. And then once we figure out what the pattern is, we might be able to start uh, determining uh, which digits are the higher digits, which ones are the medium digits, and which ones are the lower digits. Now, these two have to be of the same ilk. So therefore, this has to be, and this has to be, and this one here has to be, and the only five remaining are going to be these, so they must all be the same digit as well. 
So we know green is a highish digit. Does that tell us anything? And we know that both, well, I guess we don't really know that both of these are lowish digit. Because we could always have green be a five and this be a four one pair. We do know that there wasn't a negative constraint, right? Yeah, not necessarily all given. So we do know that blue and purple equal to five. So they are either one, four or they're two, three. Can we use that information somehow? <clears throat> What would be a way that would work? What, I, what I'm truly really trying to do is create hierarchies of digits and colors. So we know green is highish. That's kind of where we're left off. Now, I guess we can say um, orange cannot be very high, it must be a low digit. Because if this was any, like we said with the three, the, the case of the three, if we ever put a three here, that would break this. Now, if we ever put three, four, or five here, it would break this. So the orange has to be low, 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 low. So either a one or a two. Green has to be high-ish. So we said it was three, four, or five. Now, if this is a low digit, In terms of this three skyscraper, you will never see it. The question is, well, neither of these two digits could ever be higher than green because they add up to equal green. So you're either seeing neither of these or, well, no, you're never, are you, are you, are you, are you? Let's think about this for a second. I'm trying to get it straight in my head. So green is some, I'm going to type some things in just to get them in, my, just to, to visually see it, because sometimes it's hard for me to process a bunch of stuff at one time on, without having that visual cue. We know this is either one or two. So it's always, well, it's not necessarily, well, yes, it is. It's always hidden, no matter what happens. If this is one or two, this digit, well, it could still be quite low, or it could, it might not be. So can we, what's the next step that we can say we can do? We know, what do we know? Let's get into that. We still can't make a determin about, determination about what this is, but we know four. Well, let's, let's just stay on this four clue is what I'm trying to say. We know gray is... It's either low or it's mid-high, is the, what we're trying to say. Now, if it was mid-high, so like three, if it can't be four, can it? Because if this is a four, we now have one, two, and the only thing we left we can see is a five. So there, this would have to be a three instead. So this is never up to as high as four. Um, so therefore, this can never be one. Because if it was one, this would... Well, that's not true. Let me pull that back for a second. I keep, for some reason, the five is getting stuck in my head for green. doesn't have to be. Let's forget that part of it. Let's just go back to what I was thinking. This can never be four. So this has to be something other than four. One, two, three, or four. Obviously, it can't be five. I mean, it can't be four, sorry. One, two, or three. So if this is one, two, or three, we've now got possibility that we see both of these we know this one well actually we do know that this one can't be or do we know that it can't be a one no we don't know that because it could be two one no that doesn't work because if this was a one this would be a two so therefore, we'd have two, one. We've already mi missed out on one Scott script. So these would all have to be in a row in order, three, four, and five. Now, if this is one and this is two, these have to be one and two, and this has to equal three. 
So therefore, this can never be that three that we need it to be to finish off. So these are not one. Now, this is always higher than this. Because if this is one, this is two or three. If this is two, this is three. So you're always seeing at least two digits now. Let's put one, two in here. If this is one, this is two, two or three. If this is two, this is three. So this could get up to five still. Now, we clearly can't put five into blue, but we could get it up to four. The same could be said, well, the same can't be said for pink, because pink could, well, pink can't be five, sorry. So therefore, I think we are left with green having to be five. Blue could be five. No, I mean four. Calm down. <laughs> Re-explain, because I'm mixing my words up. Red, I mean, neither of these can be... Is that true to say that this can't be a five? If it's five... This just has to be some downward progression, like four, three, two, you know, three, two, one, whatever it is. We know it's not three, two, one, but it's so actually th that we do know this can't be two because it's a, what that implies is that this is a one, and therefore we have to. No, that went the opposite way. We don't know that. If this is two, this could very well be one. This could be a one, two, whatever, whatever. And we'll, we have enough to get to a four. Okay. I keep thinking I'm on right at the edge of a bit of logic that's going to work this out, and it's not working it out. Now, what was I saying? Yes, we can determine that green is a five. The reason we can do so is because you cannot put a five on a V. Uh, so therefore, we know gray is not five. We know Orange is not five. We know blue and purple are not five. So therefore, green is five. The only thing that works. Now, we must be able to get up to five. And the only way to do it is if we have orange be two, gray be three. Now, if those are those, we have to have a one, four pair. How do we determine which one is which? Well, we cannot... Oh, that's not true here. We have to go down to our three, I think. Because this cannot be a four. Because if it was, it would block everything except for the five. This should be a two. So purple is a one. And blue is, therefore, a four. And there we go. You solved the puzzle. Solution is correct. So um, that was a lot of fun. It took a minute to kind of get through the logic of why things had to be. And I think the coloring was an absolute necessity uh, at the start there. I'm glad I saw it quickly. Um, or decided to go that route quickly instead of trying to make some other determinations because uh, this seems like it absolutely had to be solved via figuring out which ones are which color and which ones are the same digits and therefore we could break it down and use reason uh, to determine uh, which ones are which because if you look at our clues we've got two three four and five can all be seen that's four here we have one four and five can be seen here that's three so and four, one works out, the two, three works for the five. So that was that. So that was Lonely Archer by Apricot. Uh, I hope you'll enjoyed that one and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.